Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm on the course with Marty Nowicki from the Impact Snap, and I got an Impact Snap here, Marty. In uh, one of our last videos, we saw the range session we did, and I was, man, I was hitting it so good on the range. So, how do we bring the good feelings that the Impact Snap is giving us? Because I don't want to be the world's best Impact Snap doer, you know? I want to be the sure. world's best golfer that I can be. And great question, because you're coming from the office, you haven't warmed up, you no. didn't hit any uh -huh. balls, so something you could do real quick. Do a few reps slow, get a, get a sense for where the wrists are gonna be. Remember, what uh, the key points we mentioned the other day is the connection of the palm to the thumb, so that as oh, yeah. the left wrist does what it needs to do, the right wrist also does what it needs to do. I wouldn't wanna see your hands separate because now you only have the stability of one hand. So make sure you have both hands are on it. Do a couple reps just slow to get the feel. Make sure the ball, good. Second uh, important point from the other day was how much you got your pelvis to turn through the shot. Right. So we're trying to coordinate the arms with the body moving through the ball. Ball stays on. Now let's turn that a little more. Perfect. Perfect. The other day I was noticing, Marty, when I was just using this and hitting shots in the range, I was hitting a lot of like dead solid shots, but they were like pulled like five yards. What do you think? And, and it, it felt like everything was pretty squared up, except it felt like the face was shut a little bit. Uh, do you think I need to be, uh, be a little bit could more? Be. It might have been strong. the right wrist. If the right wrist flattens, the face will, will close, but it will also take the path slightly to the left. So once, once the right wrist bends, the path starts moving to the left. All right, so we got a little weight here, but uh, stay tuned, guys, and we'll try to uh, incorporate some good things and hit some good shots. All right, so let's get into the golf. We're going to be bouncing back and forth between some shots and also talking to Marty. This, I think, is a really fun video. Some interesting insight, especially uh, using the feels of the uh, impact snap. All right, so that was a uh, good quality strike there, but I hit it too far and also too far left. So we're going to talk about that shot coming up. Here's Marty, really cool looking swing, makes awesome impact. Oh, it's perfect super shot. Super solid. Swing, yeah. Good shot there. Also this day, we were playing with my friend Grant. Stop, too good. Is that in? I think it might have gone in. Yeah, Marty went in, into the water. He didn't know that he cannot hit it over 200 yards. So he hit that the four iron rolled out and went into the water. Straight shot, just these. Wrong choice. Also, we're playing with my friend Grant, oh, who just Grant. hit a perfect nice. shot there. You'll see him a couple times today. So this is where I rolled to. You see Marty went a little too far and went into the water. This is my wedge. And uh, like Marty said in the intro, come directly from the office to the course. And I fatted it. Not very good. And then here's M Marty. Real solid shot, just a little long right, but real solid shot, a draw. We'll move on to the tee box of the second hole. Talk about driver. All right, so with driver, I mean, there's really no difference. I think the main feeling that I had before was I, I don't think I ever had this in that swing ball. Okay. I think I was more like this. Okay. All the deviation and flexion combination. The difference with a driver is that the swing is up with the same risk conditions. Beauty, absolutely perfect, right there. So Marty, if so, so obviously you can't use the impact snap in between shots on the course. Correct. So what's like something that you do, if you want to get the feeling of what you've been doing well with the impact snap on the course, what's something that like in between shots you have guys do? Make a fist, uh -huh. take a thumb right on top of the index knuckle, go down, move it forward. Put both hands together. 
And if you're more of a, like a, a right arm person feeling, it's oh, more big like big time, yeah, big So it's time. like kind of leading it's, with that heel pad. Yeah, it uh, the wrist bone or, or the, the palm pad is actually pushing forward against the shaft. Right. Or in golf, it's, it's not like slinging it. It's actually no, pushing. We don't want the right wrist to work this way. It's really just a pushing motion where the right arm stays bent until the ball's gone. So tell us a little bit about yourself as we head to, those are two good drives. I think you got me on it too. Um, we came about 3,000 miles to get here. Yeah. So yeah, so tell me, where, where, do, you, where do you usually teach and, and stuff? Because we don't, uh, other than the impact snap, we don't really know too much about you, Marty. So tell us, you're, you're a golf instructor in your... I'm a golf instructor, uh, 20... Four years now, uh, upstate New York, outside of Syracuse. I teach at the Turning Stone Resort Casino, which is about 25 minutes east of Syracuse, uh -huh. four hours north of the city. Okay, uh, cool. So New York is not just New York City. There's uh, Albany. You're Syracuse. only four hours from New York City. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's to be in downtown Manhattan. Of so. your clientele that sees you for lessons, like how how many of them are? Just like resort guests, uh, like very, in. very few are actually resort guests. In the last couple of years, uh, my client base in the summer months comes from New York, Boston, Philly, Toronto, Buffalo, Rochester, Albany. Okay. Uh, basically, the greater New York and surrounding areas, about four or five hours away. Okay. Um, my winter clients, because we have a d two dome facilities, so when it's snowing out, I still teach. Oh, that's cool. Uh, How many yards? Uh, it's can a you hit up hundred yards. Wow, wow, huge from dome. Corner to corner is 115. Ceiling is like 72 feet high. So uh, we train all winter, and we have a short game job at Turning Stone. So there's in the winter months, it's more of my juniors, my high school players. All right, well, that's only three yards apart. Our, our balls here. That, that's very good drives, and we're past. We're just level or barely past this fairway bunker. So I got you by about four steps or three steps there, Marty. What? All right, so bogey par start for me, going on to the third hole. This is also less than driver. That same shot that I hit on the first hole, solid and left, so. Get a fix for that in a second. Marty hit an awesome shot. Keep going. Up over those trees on the right and then drawing back into the fairway. Should be, oh yeah, should be great. Here Marty has 165 yards. This is an eight iron. It's a blue pin, which means it's in the back, and it's all the way on the left. There's water short left of this whole location. Let's see how he does. Oh, beautiful Super shot, solid folks. there. Really cool looking sequence to his swing. Yep. Roping around. High, just left. Nice draw that Very kicks nice. to like 20 feet or something. And then I was blocked out from the trees. I had to punch up and then uh, scramble on and got to that point. So... Here's Marty for his birdie. Oh, you made it. Made it if he hit it. Let's move on to the par four, fourth hole. All right, here's Marty with driver. There's a, a thick woods on the right that you absolutely can't go in. Oh, love that, Marty. Wow. Marty hit it right out of the center of the face, right down the middle. So all this talk about the impact snap and all these feelings really want to get my hands out in front of my swing and on that one I did and uh, I launched it really low but man the ball speed was hot it's all about so I think we're good good all right here's Marty from about 160 yards now it's drawing very good real solid another draw just kind of got held up in the wind a little bit and landed short of the green, but not much. This is, I forget how far I had, but this is an eight iron. Eight or nine iron, I'm not sure. There's a little tuft of different kind of grass right by my ball, so I really had to get my impact forward. That, I hit that real pure though, that was good. So it came up just short, same thing. There was a little wind up there we didn't feel. It's all right, so now I got this chip for 
like a birdie chip. See, it was one of those impact wasn't awesome, but put it within a foot, so that's a par. Marty chipped real close. Marty has a real good short game as well. Uh, chipped real close, and he's he made a par as well. All right, so moving on to the fifth hole, par three. This is, I think, 160 from here. Something like that. This is eight iron. You hear the uh, you hear the planes from the airport right behind us. Solid there. A nice solid shot, kind of low. At the pin, zooming in. Went just a little long. And you can see the ridge there. So I landed on that ridge and it kicked back here to the fringe. Yeah, the ball launched right into a high area of that grass, which slowed it down a little bit. Marty chipping. Hit a good chip there. All right, so this is for my par. I like my setup there. Let's see if I hit it in the center of the face. Yeah, I hit it in the center of the face, just I didn't see okay. it breaking left. So this one's just a par five you want to go. <laughs> and I'm going to try to fade it. All right, so this is a, a par five, not that long, but a par five uh, from, we're playing from like the Long Beach Open tees, they call them here, the, la the black tees. So I want to hit kind of a, a straight ball that fades a little bit here. So yeah, uh, Marty just reminded me to tilt away from the target a little bit and then put that save move on it with the hands. It's a lot like that stuff that I was doing with AJ Bonner down in San Diego. The kind of the move that he talks about with the hands as far as the top of the club face going faster than the bottom of the club face, you get that feeling with the impact snap a lot. Perfect. Yeah, we, uh, we both hit real good drives there. All right, Marty, I'll ask you the question I ask almost every pro in the last two years. Um, there seems to be like, when it comes to like smash factor, right? Mm -hmm. So the smash factor for you guys out there is like, the uh, define that for us. So it'd be what's uh, basically, if you take the club speed, mm -hmm and divide it into the ball speed. Right. So if a guy, some, someone swinging 100 miles an hour, legally the coefficient of restitution uh, set by the USGA is 1.50. So that means that the ball is only allowed to leave the club at 150 right. miles an hour. Yeah. And you know, for the last probably seven or eight years, most manufacturors have achieved the max COR. Mm -hmm. yep. And now there are some different technologies that maximize it in off-center hits now. So. Yeah, to get closer <laughs> yeah. and closer to that on the other. Exactly. My friends who play on some of the tour, uh, play on tour, Asian tour and um, Canada tour and stuff like that, those guys, when they hit their driver, they can get like 1.5 and one of them can get like consistently 1.52. Mm -hmm. But me, I have a higher swing speed than them, but like my ball speed comes nowhere close to theirs. So why do you think that is? First and does would, the impact snap have anything to do with it? Uh, the impact why? snap would help it because when the wrist conditions get in the proper condition and you swing up on it, that will launch it higher and reduce the spin. So the first thing I would look at in your case is the spin rate. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you've got to be, the guys on tour in the mid 2000s or even low 2000s mm -hmm. launching it at 12, 13, 14 degrees. Right. So it's, it's peaking at 100 feet in the air mm -hmm. right. and then coming out of the sky still with an angle where it can bounce. Yeah, like I thought like with Smash Factor, like my friend Ryan who played on the Australasian tour for a long time, he definitely has like an extreme case of that lowercase y like sure, out like here. Sure, like a John Ron. Uh-huh. Right. And uh, Justin Thomas. Yeah. And then, and I don't, and I swing faster than Ryan, but he hits it so way past when, me. When so the, I didn't know if there's yeah, a connection there. When the wrists are moving, uh, from flexion into extension while you're hitting it that takes away from the strike and it adds mm -hmm. to spin It also changes the path of the club. Okay. So these guys are normally, you know, coming into the ball at about one degree and out Yeah D lofted swinging up which yeah. now launches it high and takes the spin away, right? So the, the like a, a Tony Finau or a, a, a Dustin Johnson, I mean they are 
adding loft with their spine angle right while they're de-lofting it with their wrists right okay right. and able to swing up on a ball yeah it's a certain move with the hands you do it's not just everything you can go you can do to go fast it's correct. a certain move with the hands to give it the ultimate squish correct because yeah. if the wrist goes from flexion into extension that changes the path that changes the loft it changes the spin rate so and it takes away from the stability of the club okay So that was like, feel wise anyway, like tour quality impact, but it was that like five yards left, mm -hmm. you know, which is hard to play with. So, and you, you think, you think my body's just going dead through impact? Uh, it's probably going a hair too slow. Also, we'll check, uh, we'll check the club base and have set. Never, maybe That's the club base is closed already and you're, and you're not individually seeing this. Well, today has been slightly left. Nothing um, has really been off to the right yet. Yeah. So we'll, we'll check something yeah. in the setup. Maybe that's uh, what's driving it. It's helped me in the past where I've, if I want to hit push draws, like yeah. you know, opening the face like yeah. five degrees or three degrees. Shot. Yeah. Ooh. Sit down. Oh, very good. So Marty, I definitely like getting more into that lowercase y position, mm -hmm. and I want to get more and more closer to that. So you think training at training with something that's not a golf glove, like training with the impact snap, snap that'll transfer over to your golf swing? It can, like we used yeah. it the other day with the speed stick. We put mm -hmm. both of them together, created some speed, and checked for the angles. So right. yeah. yeah. Uh, to the driver again. Like that's... what's the best way to make what you're doing with the impact snap? transfer over into your actual golf swing? Well, I think it depends on what level golfer you currently are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you're a 25 right. handicapper, let's let's just go slow and really uh -huh. understand what the wrist is supposed to do. And as, uh, you know, as someone progresses, you're a low handicapped golfer. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we can add some speed, but then as we got to film it a little more just to make sure that the body is corresponding well with the arm. So okay. as, as someone is you know, a more qualified golfer, once the arms get trained better, well, we also look at uh, what the body's doing, we look at your setup, we look at the club face, uh, both at setup uh, yep. and pre-shot, little things like that. Try to turn it over just a bit. I'm trying to turn it over just a bit, trying to hit a draw here. Yep, that was good. That was well, like my best shot of the day, for sure. Hit that one really well. Most places, that was good. Yeah. Back here somewhere. Pretty good transition. I still could could go more arms first, even. All right, here's Grant. Grant hit this awesome. Oh, I love that here. one, Grant. Yeah, that was the center of the face. Whew. Yeah, Grant killed that, and he hit it like a low rocket that just chased out forever. It was an awesome shot. It, yep. Awesome, man. That looks smooth. Very good. Yeah, Marty hit that really well. Caught it right in the center of the face. I should have gotten more down the line swings from him. I mean, face on swings from him to really see the impact. So that one, Marty was basically like, he doesn't use any wrists outside of 100, uh, inside of 130 yards here. He tries not to. This one was further than that, but he still tried to have that same feeling. See how on the way through, there's basically no like uh, resetting not much setting on the backswing and, and like no resetting on the way through so that's a way to do it we're going to talk about it later he does that basically with all of his wedge shots so he hits this really cool wedge shot on the next hole that you guys will see yeah i hit an awesome eight iron there that's up in the air and strawing and uh landed nicely so i'll have a good reasonable opportunity for a birdie here 
Yeah. Eight, and it kind of felt like we were doing it on the range the other day. I mean, it felt like this, even though I'm sure in the video it was like this, but it felt like, you know. It's key to scale a couple of face points. If you can always get past the ball. Here, here's the ball. If the ball launches get your hands before ball. this thing oh, okay. comes out, this is so from down the line you'll see some of this. Yeah. All right, but get a couple videos this way because if you can launch the ball, then let it out. And we're just trying to get yeah. an inch, really an inch, like an inch, an inch, an inch. You, you gave know? me where, where you're like, I'm there and you like hit the shaft. Because yeah. I, I, I haven't felt that before where I'm trying to like really still keep it solid. Yeah. Out I have before like when I was doing so much golfing machine stuff. Like I, I, was, I had a lot of tension in my swing like trying desperately to hold on to it. But I think my body yeah. work was so overactive in transition before. All right, this shot is really cool. He said, I can't really hit an impact snap shot here. Ooh, that was nice. Run on, baby. Run on. Very good shot. Very good. All right, another chance for birdie here. Just alignment. This wasn't lined up very well. And here is Marty for his... Par. That's an awesome up and down. Really good. That was a really creative, cool looking shot there with the wedge. All right, this is a short par That's four. I hit that perfect. really good, really solid. And I was just surprised to see it kind of fall out of the air. I feel like I've lost the life of this driver. I just think it's been hit too many times, too many range balls. I don't feel like the face is hot anymore. It's got any pop. Mm -mm. Let me know in the comments if you guys know about that. Can a driver after being hit thousands and thousands of times with rock hard range balls, can it lose the pop of the face a little bit? Oh, that's degrees. Uh, no, man, you hit that solid too, but I think it's a little too, too much right. All right, so here is the wedge shot that I was telling you guys about before. So watch how little wrist action Marty tries to put into this. So, He's really trying to keep that impact wrist condition basically the same throughout this whole swing. He'll teach us how. Stay tuned. Good shot. Get up. Oh, yeah. All over it. So, Marty, if, if what would that look like on the impact snap? Because before you hit that, you were telling me about. So how? So this is kind of one of our chipping videos. You basically did no short. no wrist. No, action. and this yeah. this is uh, really how I like my junior golfers and amateurs to, to train. Uh, I'll take the impact snap. I'll turn it a quarter turn toward the target grip, halfway down. I'll get the bar on here. Now that's a little more uh -huh. flex than I would than I would start with. Yeah. But just to get the feel of how the left wrist gets isolated, where it can't cock, it can't bend, like this. Yep, and go down a little bit farther on the grip, and then keep the bar right up against that, because that isolates the lead wrist. So now your main power source would be your right arm and your turn. So that shot you just hit was just yeah, basically... Yeah, I just felt like, you know, think of what Steve Stricker is at Johnson. Just, just like day, hitting, yeah. hitting a golf, you know, hitting a wedge shot. Well, that's cool. Just by no wrist. You really do have to turn it because if you stop turning, uh, yes. There's like heart back there or something. I landed it good and I put, I, I put grooves on it too. So for you and your wedges, or, or for you and your golf game, you really don't have much wrist action at all, like inside of how many yards? Like uh, you know, 20 yards or? Yeah, probably 140 yards. And unless it's a front pin and I need to get a lot of spin on the ball, uh -huh. or, or a pin that need, requires a lot of spin, because, you know, most of my wedges will hit and release about 12 feet. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, makes it a little more predictable, easier to. Right, right. Easier to uh, Golf. Yeah, you know the outcome. Both of those get a little more firm than I thought they would. Yeah. All right, the green was real firm, so I landed it right by the hole, but ran all the way out to here. Been thinking a lot about.
distance control, doing all the work with the Be Better Golf putting system with Tim Yelverton and changing my concept of how to control my lag putts rather than a concept of distance to a concept of time. Uh, if you saw, a guy saw that video that we made before, and it's really helped my leg putting a lot. All right, going to the ninth hole, final hole. This is like 230 yards, long par three. Got hybrid out, and I would have to really kill this to get it all the way there. Hit it well, just blocked it right just a little bit. Came up to this spot. That's like a crabby kind of grass, like crisscrossing. Did not, uh, uphill lies have been very tough for me. Did not hit that great, but uh, as far as impact, but the result was very good. Got it to about five feet, and just talking about the Be Better Golf putting system, you guys can get it at BeBetterGolf.net slash putting. That is a really perfect Tim Yelverton lower body setup there. Uh, squatted and solid. Stay tuned. This is kind of a cool wrap up. All right, great to play with you. Great to be with you. Thanks. Man. Sure, it won't be the last time that we'll uh, get to tee it up. All right. So the question I have for you now that I asked you yesterday, but in one ear out the other. Before the next time I see you, either in New York or here in California, what do you want me doing with the impact snap to get more of that lowercase Y? So I, that is something that I want. Uh, first, visit impactsnap.com watch days one through seven. So we have yeah. a seven day training program just so you can get more and more familiar with the basic movements of the wrist through impact so that we can stabilize ultimately the shaft. So it's like keep keep doing that. A lot of pitch shots, a lot of punch shots, uh, taking eight iron practice, flighting it down uh, with the driver or longer balls that you want to get up in the air, get the tilt a little bit more with the same wrist. Same feeling, just yes. different tilt. If you guys are interested in getting an impact snap, go to impactsnap.com and if you use the promo code BE BETTER, you'll get 10% off and free shipping to the USA. So that's really uh, a good deal I think you should take advantage of. I'm excited you came out because I've seen this thing for a long time and I never, uh, just in looking at it and not seeing any of the literature or videos, I thought it wanted you to do something that it doesn't want you to do. This also, like, because I've always, you saw my yardstick and stuff, yep. I've always wanted to be very square, and I didn't want any of this, but this has really given me a great feeling of... Stable arms. Some real stable and impact, solid, yeah. And then keep it going around. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to draw the ball, yes, you can do this. You keep keep your arms out there, but for a better player, I'd say, hey, keep turning, let the arms continue to move around or something. Right. Yeah, in my golf swing, I'm doing a thing where, for me, I, I was always this way. So I'm feeling the arms kind of feel first this way. But then when I do this transition, sometimes I forget to then finish it with the body. Correct. You know, because I'm getting really good. I've really changed my swing from being this kind of guy to more like this. Mm -hmm. But now, now I can take it to the next level and finish it. Once, yeah. Because the club's now coming more from the inside, let's get the body. So that's kind of the progression into being a really good player, you have the ability to get the club swinging from the inside. Now we've got to control that, uh, both with wrist angles and then uh, the turn of the body. Yeah, let's get everything working together. So go to impactsnap.com, use the promo code BEBETTER, and click the subscribe button on this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.